you two. I hope you all are doing well and having a wonderful day. So today I wanted to go ahead and give you guys a quick tour of some of the vegetables that I've been growing this summer in my garden. This is my little finger eggplant. I decided to grow eggplant in a container because I figured that they wouldn't need a whole lot of space and that they would be easier to take care of hoping that the animals wouldn't want to eat them. And so far my assumptions have been correct. I started these little finger egg plants from seed. The harvest has been really, really great for this eggplant. Um, as you can see, I have quite a few that needs to be picked and I'm getting ready to cut them now. And I've already made several dishes with this. So if you're looking for an eggplant that's not black beauty, which is really big and sort of sometimes can be hard, Little Finger is a really, really heavy producer, easy to care for, and uh, really pretty, really, really pretty. The flowers are purple, a lilac purple, and then they produce these beautiful fruit. And also, I have only fed these plants with organic food waste, so that just goes to show organic food waste can be a great fertilizer little sweet uh, pumpkin. These are little sugar pumpkins that I started from seed. I haven't kept up with spraying within the last couple of days of my or organic fungicide mix, um, so I need to come back out here and do so. But my theory is with when you're dealing with patches like this, speak softly, carry a big stick. <laughs> so uh, I do have one right here that I think is it is ready. See the stem? is all dried up so I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna cut that one out um, and then there's another one there's another one if I can get you guys to see it there so not bad for a small little pumpkin patch there I have a couple of areas in which I'm growing watermelon my yard slopes on a hill so this year I decided to utilize more of the hill. I haven't been utilizing it and I said why not? Vines and things of that sort would be perfect to grow watermelons. Although the weeds gets a little bit high in here so um, again you have to carry your big stick. <laughs> so uh, I wanted to show you one of the watermelons right here that's in plain view and uh, these are sugar baby watermelons so they're going to be somewhat small. But what I've noticed about watermelons in general is if they're exposed to any sun, then they'll get the variation of the white, right, and the green. But if they're hidden, they don't have that variation. And let me show you another one. And see, this one is sort of hidden. And see how pretty dark, it's sort of like a, a violet gray in there, so. I think it likes to be shaded. This one may be ready very soon, so I'm going to have to keep an eye on that one. So I'm going to cover it back over. So that's one of my watermelon patches. Let me show you the other area. Before I move on into the other area, I did want to show you that I planted some Thai pumpkin over here. So this is the vine. The vine starts here, goes up the hill, and then I started to trail it back down on the side of the watermelon here. Um, I haven't seen any any little pumpkins on it yet um, but I'm hoping that we still have enough time that maybe it will produce but the leaves on this is very pretty it's sort of variegated they're really big too much different than your regular pumpkin and way different than watermelon but let me show you the other watermelon patch alright so let's see this watermelon patch on the opposite side of the hill as you can see, we have one beautiful baby there. These are sugar baby watermelons, and I grew them from seed. Um, again, the same as the other side that are sugar babies. So I have one ready there. Up here, hidden, is a violet blue one, and it's right there. If you guys can see it, it's right there. Um, that one's still growing. This one may be ready very soon. Uh, and then I have another one right over here that's getting fat but I think I want to let it grow a little bit longer all right so let me show you my okra uh, there is my okra plant right here I have five of them in a vertical line right there and uh, there are a ton of ants on the flowers and the, I'll have to come on the other side but the flowers are so beautiful 
so over here we're going to move over here and I'm going to show you my humongous zucchini patch so zucchini has done really 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 well for me and I usually never really have any problems with zucchini anyway um, just the leaves would often get a little bit of mildew and I had a video previously on how to take care of that that worked really well for me um, but here is one getting ready to grow well there and this has been a very prolific bloomer I've had so many zucchini I've had some that were hidden that were actually underneath the, the mulch and they literally look like someone's thigh <laughs> so I've given some to family and we've made zucchini bread we've made zucchini bake and it, yeah zucchini has been really really good so if you're looking for something easy to grow zucchini is usually the crop all right, so I started a lot of the tomato plants indoors in late fall, but somehow when I was getting ready to transplant them, almost all of them died. So I had to start all over in like mid to late April. So my tomatoes have been really, really slow. I have yet to really get any ripe tomatoes. There's been tons of green. And then just as I'm thinking, oh, we're gonna get some tomatoes, the deer came and snipped all the plants, like literally all of my tomato plants. Like they went around and it's like, hey, guys there's some over here hey guys there's more over here they had a chow down so um there is one i don't know if you guys can see i have five plants right there in five gallon buckets but right here i'll see if i can do it with my stick maybe that'll help a little bit better right there there is some you can't see because the sun's in the way there's some ripening, finally turning red. So I started some heirloom tomatoes that will bloom purple. I have Roma, I have beefsteak, I have some heirloom um, like pear shaped tomatoes that may turn yellow. And then I had some beefsteak. So those are the types of tomato seeds that I grew this year. Oh, I really wanted to show you my sunflowers too. So I have some sunflowers that I grew right here hidden in my ornamental grass. Hey, hey, the deer didn't find it, so they don't know it's here now that it's gotten tall enough, so I finally have some sunflowers growing here. Um, the birds, though, they've already found it. As you can see, they've started to eat right there. Um, these little ones are doing just fine, though. And then there's a super-sized one getting ready to come up to the top. These are seeds that I had saved, and the seeds were old, literally. The seeds probably were about five, six years old that I saved from a sunflower that I grew years ago, which was a mammoth. So um, I planted them in close proximity to each other, hoping that they would help to prop each other up, which seemed to work well, so that I didn't have to stake anyone. But I did know like the ones that weren't as strong turned out shorter and smaller. And then the main strongest one is the tallest. And I say that one is about maybe uh, 10 feet now. Yeah, because it's on a hill, so it doesn't look as tall. But yeah, that's my sunflower. I think sunflowers are just beautiful. Hidden on a hill, I decided to grow some of my uh, squash plants. So I had these in a container. There were four of them. I had yellow squash and patty pan squash mixed together. Um, the yellow squash were doing okay in the, in the pot when I had everybody together. However, they were not producing. So I said, let me go ahead and find a spot on the hill and go ahead and plant them. As Soon as I planted them on the hill, the squash bugs got to them. And so I lost plants that you can see here. There's one dead there. And uh, these are the patty pan that's left. So there is a little patty pan squash starting to grow right there. If you guys can see it right there. Um, but I do see some vine, vine borer. Um, issues going on with this part of the the plant so I'm not sure if this is going to be here long the deers did get a chance to nibble there as well so I didn't think deers really particularly cared for squash but I guess they like this patty pan I started some cantaloupe seeds in this Dollar Tree laundry basket actually and I just put some fabric liner in there 
and I've already gotten one little cantaloupe but as you can see there's one and there's two still on the vine and this is my container garden area here so I have some contender bush green beans over here and then I have some radishes growing in here and then over here are tomato plants and here is that one tomato that's going to be that purplish color if you can see it there better now and these are all in five gallon buckets tomatoes do better in the ground but I had so many seedlings to come up I decided to go ahead and put them in buckets and this long beauty is my Malabar spinach I've already picked some down here and the deer ate quite a bit um, but it's getting ready to set seed right there so that's Malabar spinach this is my humongous cucumber vine and I have yet to get any plants from this yet because of the fact that I started it very late I had uh, several different cucumbers growing so these are um, little lemon cucumbers mixed with your straight eights as well as um, some cucamelons. So I'm looking forward to getting some of those. So as you can see, oh yeah, there's one of the lemons right there getting ready to develop soon. I did grow a variety of lettuces as well. And um, they sort of took a hold because of the heat. But however, this is supposed to be a butter crunch lettuce and it actually is starting to come back. I had cut it back, and it's one of those cut and come again kind of crops. And it's growing actually in a little bowl that I got from the Dollar Tree. And so yeah, I'm very proud and I'm looking forward to growing more lettuces. This is the final section of my garden. And again, because everything's on a hill, everything is sort of divided. Um, but these are some cucamelons. And this is a cucamelon vine. Let me see if I can show you some of the baby cucamelons under here. So you guys can see. Let me see if I can get my stick. See it right there? It's right there. That's a cucamelon right there at the tip of the, the bamboo stick. And over here, mixed in with the cucamelon are some of the Roma or the sort of I call them teardrop tomatoes. The deer really, really, really ate those. So I'm hoping to get some. There's a bunch right there that are still green. It's just so slow to turn red, which is sort of frustrating. And there's tons of them. They glow, grow in clusters. So moving on, I have, this is a bush, a bush. I've had a lot of cucumbers off of this little plant. This is a container supposed to be a container friendly uh, cucumber called bush cucumber and I had it in a container but the container was just getting dry so much that I said forget it I'm just going to put it in the ground and it produced so many cucumbers so I really really would like to keep seeds for that again because they were sweet they were tender they look like pickling cucumbers so they were really really tasty over here um, mixed in with that cucumber the bush cucumber are some lemon cucumbers and there are some actually starting right there as you can see so there's some lemon ones and then here's some more tomato plants I, I have another tomato plant right here and this is another one of those red that's going to be like a purple red heirloom little cherry sized tomato and finally they are turning ripe red Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video. I truly appreciate your time and your effort to join in today. And if you're not a subscriber, please consider subscribing. I would love to have you join me on my weekly journeys. If you hit that subscribe button, it's free. And once you do, please hit that bell notification so that you'll be notified of the newest videos once they're released. Feel free to like, comment, and share. I would love to hear from you too, so our dialogue is very important. Until next video, I send you all my love, peace, and blessings. Take care. Bye.